Welcome to the Spotlight segment. This is a segment dedicated to interviews with developers or interesting happenings in the world of Android. And now for this week's episode, here's your Spotlight. Let's turn to our Spotlight section then. And we have two uh, product releases to talk about. And that is product releases from two firms. Each has released more than one product. We have um, the fan editions coming down the track from Samsung. And we have the T-Series coming down the track from Xiaomi. Let's start with Samsung then. And we have a few things, don't we? We've got an S24 fan edition, the FE. We've got the the mobile version of the Galaxy Watch FE. Um, and was there a tablet as well? Yeah, the Tab S10 series. Was yeah, really- Tab S10 Plus and Ultra. That's right. So shall we start with the S24 fan edition? Yeah, I watched the uh, the thing they announced the phone. I can say that uh, from it's it's not too good upgrade like concerning those technical specs. It still comes with 128 gigs and eight gigs of RAM, and uh, if you're getting to an to an 56, you still get eight gigs. So I was hoping maybe it's gonna get 12, but it's still on eight. Uh, I, I was really hoping to get in 12, but still it's on 8. And one another thing is it's going to come with Exynos uh, 2400C. It's going to be uh, 10 cores, and it's going to be uh, in a, another upgrade. They say it's going to work really well, but let's see how it's going to happen. For the 23FE version, it had two versions on United States, it had the Smart Dragon version, and in the rest of the world, it had Exynos version. But this one is coming with Exynos processor all around the world. Yeah. It does have a 512, though, doesn't it? And the S24. It does. has, but still has an 8 gig. Eight gig I don't yeah, know why. It's still only 8 gig. Yeah, yeah. But, and, and it's quite a bit bigger display, isn't it? Although apparently yeah, not as like good a display. From, from uh, the 23 FE, it had 6.4 inches, and now it has 6.7 yeah. inches. For the 23 FE, it was like, it fell between the regular S23 and the S23 Plus, but this, exactly. this time, it's basically the same size as the S24, S24 Plus. Plus. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. But not as good as the display. Yeah, and it's going to cost you 649 and it's going to get seven years of uh major android upgrades this is look the, probably the cheapest you're getting the seven years of os updates isn't it yeah it's interesting we're interested to see if the 9a follows that although i guess the weird thing about it yeah um, and it won't come down this far yet but yeah. the s24 has been out a while so are there deals on the s24 that put it pretty close to the s24 fe yeah, uh, so I, I think yeah, there are deals, and frankly, I don't know if I were to uh, even buy a regular S twenty four. If I find it on a better deal, I probably will take that over the uh, FE edition, even though I yeah. like the size. But um, I think that Snapdragon, though, um, I'll take that any day over uh, this Exynos. I'm not trying to poo poo uh, the Exynos, but. Uh, I think the battery could probably be better with the uh, uh, the Snapdragon. <laughs> I don't know, guys. So, <laughs> speaking of speaking of battery, on twenty three FE we had uh, forty five hundred, and now we have forty seven hundred. So it's an upgrade. Yeah, bigger screen as well, though. Isn't it? Yeah, of course. Maybe, yeah, maybe, so maybe, maybe, maybe it doesn't yeah. make for, any difference. But well, it does, it does it for the have... battery because it because you need the battery is going to need need to do more yeah. work to power yeah, that display. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it might be a a good option for like you said if if you're looking for just an S24, that's definitely the better buy. But if you're looking for something the size of the S24 Plus and you don't necessarily care about specs. Um, yeah. then this this would save you some money because that's a thousand dollar phone. Um, yeah. and it's shout. even on sale, you know, maybe you could get it for eight hundred. So this would still be far cheaper than that. So I yeah. I can see that as being the only real reason to get this phone. 
Yeah, maybe maybe that's the better benchmark actually because of the size. Mm. Maybe you are saying yeah, it's yeah. flat against the FE mm-hmm. this year. So the watch, um, I think we'd had one FE watch, hadn't we, earlier in the year, uh, the Wi-Fi version, and this this one is the mobile one, isn't it? The LTE. Yeah, so this is the mobile one. So I think it was a few months ago. I recall us talking about it on here, and that was like one ninety nine. And I think we were saying it was a little bit too expensive because essentially, though, this is exactly you're getting the uh, Galaxy Watch Four. Um, it just rebranding of that uh, model to the FE. But I'm glad though that they finally brought the uh, LTE model. So if you're like me and you don't like that Wi-Fi thing or Bluetooth thing, uh, at least now you could just get that uh, mobile one for 249 which is cheaper than what the LTE version was for the Galaxy Watch 4. Does anyone remember how the, uh, the LTE version cost? Was it 299 I don't 249, remember. 249 was it, I think? Uh, for the Galaxy um Watch for the LTE model. Oh, sorry, um, the, the the four. No, I'm not, I'm not. I think this one is two forty nine, isn't it? Yeah, this one is two forty nine. So, like I said, it's just a rebranding of that watch four. So, uh, if you're looking for something and you don't mind the price, I think it's a good price. But uh, or it could go down on sale or something. So, at least we have something for someone who wants to get uh, into the watch thing. If you've never been. And I think I saw a uh, pre-order bundle deal where if you're interested in both the, the FE phone and the watch, you can, uh, I don't know if it was get the watch for free or get the watch half off or something, but um, keep that in mind if you are interested in both. I and mean, I think the Chromebook deal still carries forward with the FE, doesn't it? As well? I think they will sell, give you a Chromebook if you order it. I'm pretty sure I saw yeah, they usually have uh, Samsung has some of the best pre-order deals usually. Yeah. Uh, so check that out if you are interested. And sometimes some of these things depends on the region. Some regions may get some really nice sweet deals, and then other regions kind of just left dry. <laughs> so yeah, check upgrade. That to be sure. Upgrade pricing in the US is better than the UK, typically, even on Samsung. I mean, Samsung's still pretty good compared to the other UK offerings, but the US seems to get better uh, upgrade deals. So let's turn to the tablet then. I I always like it when uh, names come around and they they name things after other devices that used to exist. Does anyone have an S10, like a phone S10? Was that a 2019 phone, I think? Uh, I have an E10. Uh, so <laughs> that, was be- that was before I jumped on the. There, yeah, there was an S10e, wasn't there? The smaller. Yeah, one there's, the yeah no, there's S10e, the and power. then there's the E10. Or uh, you know, or I have something, a little something. I think. Yeah, it's I think it was the S10e. It was like smaller, and it had a fingerprint sensor in the side key. Yeah, it, when I, it was just as I switched, I could have got the s20 was out so i could have got the s20 the s10 or what i got which was an a90 uh because it was cheaper but uh yeah the s10 i know people liked that thing so do we know anything about this tablet yeah so i guess the big story here is that they've axed it seems like they've axed the uh regular s10 there's no s10 Tab S10, I should say. There's only Tab S10 Plus and Tab S10 Ultra. So if you prefer the 11-inch size, you uh, don't get that option this time around. Maybe they'll offer an FE or something going forward. But as far as like the premium tablet experience, they're not offering that size, which is kind of good and bad for me because <laughs> that's the size I use. And I would have been tempted to upgrade. And now I'm not tempted to upgrade. So, um, yeah, it, it's very incremental. They're, uh, they've switched to using MediaTek Dimensity chips this time around. They're slightly better than last generation. They used the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processors in there. So it's a little better than that. Um, but the hardware is the same on both models, basically. Uh, the screens have a new like anti-reflective coating that they're bragging about. but 
the actual screen itself I think is literally the same on both as they were last time. So very minor upgrades here. It's weird being able to call something a plus if you don't have anything for it to be a plus of, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you need you need a standard version, otherwise it's not plus, is it? It's just it's just it. <laughs> Yeah, well, most especially if that's what you have conditioned us to uh, thinking, and then you're giving us a plus without the uh, standard uh, base yeah, model, one. then uh, yeah. who are we fooling here? <laughs> yeah, and even more confusing is that their A series of tablets, the plus plus doesn't mean 12.4, plus means like 10 and a half. <laughs> and then the non plus is like the eight inch screen. So it's like they're all over the place. So let's move on to the second uh, range of products that were released this week then. And it was uh, my old, uh, my, one of my old manufacturers, uh, Xiaomi, came out with its T-series of uh, phones. So the 14T and the 14 Pro. Uh, interesting this, uh, not least because I think the 14 came out almost a year ago. So they've really left a long time between the um, the T series and the thing that it's a T series of. Um, anyone tempted by any of these? It's more expensive than the Samsung, so uh, perhaps not. But some interesting things I thought about this. Uh, how expensive is it? Is it uh, seven ninety nine? I think. Um, oh, what it oh, does it have, that's though, not too bad. Um, no. Is that the T or the T Pro? Because the T Pro, uh, I think. Oh well, if the T Pro is uh, seventy nine, seven ninety nine, or eight hundred dollars, uh, that's definitely cheaper than Samsung's uh, offering, isn't it? Well, Samsung's FE was. Six oh, you're talking about nine. the FE? Oh, I was. Yeah, I was so, so, so it's a T. The, uh, yeah, so so the T is kind of. I mean, perhaps it's unfair to compare them to the FE, but it's the you, you get the you get the series which is nominally better, and then you get the T which is what they used to call the flagship killer. Although this this time, because it's been so long, I think the T's got some interesting things. It's got the, it does use the MediaTek Dimensity instead of the Snapdragon, which the 14 uses. But the T has 144 hertz refresh rate, uh, which is kind of interesting. And the, um, the 14 doesn't. So it's, you know, there are reasons to pick the T over the 14, I think. Yeah, no, so do we it, know how much the uh, T Pro cost? Though, because they're think, two, they're, you know, the T, uh, 14 yeah. T and 14 T Pro. So yeah, really yeah, the, the like 14. The T's, aren't they? Yeah, the four, the 14 doesn't have like the 14 proper doesn't have the um, uh, the the 144. The T series does. So um, I'll, I'll I'll have a look. I, I think the T Pro is 799, but I'll check. So is this just a happy accident uh, that? The T series ships with the Android 14, or was this done on purpose? Has it been like that with Xiaomi for a while now? Yeah, I'd be surprised if it didn't. So my 12T Pro had 14 before I uh, uh, decided to get a new phone. They, they've had 14 for a while uh, under the under the skin of Hyper OS, which is uh, has replaced Me UI. Uh, or at least has been rebranded. So um, yeah, the, the, the twelve, yeah, the tw the twelve has had uh, fourteen. <laughs> the cat. Well, to be fair to uh, Xiaomi, though, um, you know, even Google hasn't released whatever uh, updated there. So um, I, I think it has to come with fourteen. And I hope though that uh, as soon as the uh, fifteen comes out, that they will also jump on it. Uh, did yours ever get an update, uh, Ed, or did it just languish on uh, what it came on? No, it got updates to 14, but the updates were really inconsistent. So it would it would not get updates forever, and then it would like get three in two months. So uh, there was one point where I was stuck on a security patch for like seven months, and then I would get three. Uh, I would get the next month's three patches because um, HyperOS got an update. Uh, so it's really patchy, really inconsistent, but it was still being updated at the time I gave it up. Well, at least uh, you, you get some update. I think to never get it is a problem, but even if I don't get it for a while, but then it's there, I think it's still good. 
unless something very severe happens that it really is going to crash my phone or whatever. But as long as you get that update later on, I think it's all good, isn't it?